Good day to you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I'm delighted to be able to speak to you on a subject which is of enormous importance to the future of humanity, indeed to the future of all living beings. On this occasion, I'd like to greet Dr. David Holman, and I want to compliment the World Council of Churches for the leadership role that it has been playing in bringing about awareness and using a faith-based approach in looking at the whole issue of climate change. Indeed, there is a need for us to focus on these aspects, which clearly transcend all religious beliefs. They transcend anything to do with human behavior, human greed, human aspirations, because ultimately we all live on planet Earth, and if we're not able to protect the bounty of resources that we have around us, then clearly we would be harming ourselves. We would be harming creation in general, and it certainly would not do us any credit to destroy what we have inherited. While I talk about the equity and ethical dimensions of climate change, let me also mention another aspect which I think has come to the fore, largely because the Norwegian Nobel Committee awarded the 2007 Nobel Peace Prize to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which I have the privilege of chairing, and Mr. Al Gore, former Vice President of the US. And that really relates to the whole issue of climate change and its relationship, its nexus with peace and stability. By, by awarding the Nobel Peace Prize for 2007, the decision makers who have given us this privilege have clearly highlighted the importance of maintaining stability of the Earth's climate, because if we fail to do that, then we would certainly affect the stability of human society as a whole. Let me just go into the history of climate change. We know very well that since industrialization began, human society's dependence on the use of fossil fuels has increased enormously. This clearly has generated economic progress. This has provided more and more goods and services. And as a result, it has also fueled a desire for newer goods and services. But in this process, we have clearly imposed a major externality on the planet and on other sections of society. If we look at the differential contribution to the concentration of greenhouse gases in the Earth's atmosphere, clearly the major responsibility for this particular contribution lies on the shoulders of developed societies and the richest countries in the world. On the other hand, if we look at the impacts of climate change, then these would fall unfairly and disproportionately on the shoulders, on the lives of some of the most dispossessed, the most underprivileged societies on Earth. What are the impacts of climate change? Well, firstly, the Earth is warming, and is warming faster than we have seen at any corresponding period in history in the past. Secondly, this is not a smooth and linear process. Apart from warming of the Earth, we see changes in precipitation patterns, essentially with precipitation increasing in some parts of the globe and declining, declining in other parts of the globe, something that the IPCC has brought out with a fair amount of precision. There's also an increase in extreme precipitation events and an increase in floods, droughts, heat waves, and other such conditions. But one of the most serious impacts, I believe, is the increase in sea levels around the globe which clearly places at a great disadvantage and certainly provides a threat to some of the low-lying areas of the world, particularly the small island states and several co coastal locations. We know what has happened, for instance, recently in Myanmar, where a major storm surge, a cyclone, has caused havoc, has killed tens of thousands of people, and has really devastated all the property and assets in an extremely poor country to begin with. We have seen similar devastation taking place in Bangladesh repeatedly, because that's a low-lying country, and with sea level rise, every single natural event which has a tendency to affect uh, land areas and, and which can lead to uh, coastal flooding really becomes much more severe as a result of sea level rise. So therefore, I think it is extremely important for us, and particularly those who are in a position of privilege, 
and are better off than our brethren on this planet to focus on some of the ethical dimensions of climate change. I would also like to highlight the fact that every faith in this world has at the very core of its beliefs and tenets the requirement for human beings to protect what creation has given us, what our creator has given us by way of resources all around us. Now if we can use these to our benefit in a sustainable manner without depleting or degrading them, that would do us credit and this is something which would certainly be in keeping with every religion of the world. But if in the bargain, while we enjoy all the good things that we have become accustomed to in the form of goods and services in this world, we destroy whatever we have around us, then that clearly goes against every religion that human beings adhere to. It is for this reason and many others that I would like to compliment the World Council of Churches for having taken a leadership position in this area and for having ensured that people of faith understand the reality of climate change and see it as an extremely important part of what, what faith requires us to do. It is absolutely essential that those of us who enjoy everything that life has provided to start reducing the emissions of greenhouse gases. This would require some changes in values, it would require changes in lifestyles, it would certainly require the implementation of new technological solutions. But technologies are developed by human beings and they are developed in times of peace and war for purposes that we feel would ensure our attainment of goals and objectives that we hold dear. We hope that we are living in an era of peace and that we would ensure that the human race continues to enjoy the benefits of peace even though we do have conflict and more so we have the potential for conflict as a result of climate change all over the globe. And therefore may I submit that for reasons of ethics, for reasons of ensuring equity, we have to bring about reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. I have had a long association with the World Council of Churches and I recall with great pride and pleasure that in March 1990 I spoke at the convocation that was held in Seoul, Korea. And that was really an inspiring moment where so many people had gathered together to discuss issues that would affect the human condition, the future of the human race and what we are all about. And on that occasion, uneducated as I was on the subject, I spoke about climate change and what it represents as an opportunity and a threat to human society. I urge all of you ladies and gentlemen to continue this good work and to ensure that based on faith and based on the rationale of why we must protect this planet earth that we would be able to bring about a change in human behavior and in our value systems. Because I think in the absence of that technological solutions, economic decisions are not going to go far at all and they have to be driven essentially by the inner urge of human society to bring about change and to ensure that we stabilize the atmosphere of this planet which would lead to a stabilization of the Earth's climate in itself. But may I also say that we need to work with a sense of urgency because we have already committed the Earth and this planet to a level of climate change that in any case will impose considerable hardship and a great deal of burden to all sections of society but most particularly to those sections of society which are poor and which are underprivileged. So there is in this a great opportunity for all of us to rise to a level above material wants and desires and to be able to see that we ensure for coming generations and certainly those who are underprivileged in this generation to be able to live in a state of peace and harmony and to be able to uh, pursue livelihoods that clearly would be threatened if we destroy the natural resources and degrade them in the manner that we have been doing in the past. So once again may I thank you for this enormous opportunity which I value very much. I apologize for not being able to 
uh, be with you physically, but I have commitments in other parts of the globe. And in my own limited way, I'm trying to spread the message based on science, based on economic rationale, but we all need your help. We need your leadership, we need your support. Because unless faith-based organizations do what is required with a sense of urgency, the human race will continue to plunder the resources of this planet and clearly destabilize the Earth's climate to a le level that would certainly not be sustainable. So thank you very much and God bless you all.